Are you using your senses? I mean, are you putting on your Sherlock Holmes, becoming an investigative sleuth in your wellness business, especially as it relates to which oils and which acupuncture points you are choosing as a treatment protocol for your patients or clients. My name is Diane Del Reyes. I am a licensed acupuncturist. I've been in the health and wellness industry for close to 25 years now, and I'm also a certified holistic health coach. I am the creator of AccuOil Alchemy, Essential Oil Energetics and Classifications, Leverage of Holistic Business Academy, all online courses where I help you to grow your business, whether it's by specializing in differentiating yourself with a new skill like AccuOil Alchemy, the Essential Oil AccuPoint method, or by creating a separate stream of income, mostly through a course, could be a membership or a program. How you get there is basically the same. It's the same vehicle. So I teach you how to do that so you can leverage your time, impact more people, increase your income, and all without constantly having to worry about where your next patient or client is from. So it's moving away from a one-to-one into a one-to-many. Whatever your wherever you are in this spectrum, I'm here to help you. Now, one of the most important aspects in your in your industry or in when you're choosing, in this case, essential oils and acupuncture points, but really whatever you're doing, you have to be able to do a differential diagnosis for your patient or client. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that you we're all bio-individual, right? We're all unique in our symptoms, our specific symphony of symptoms, our genetics, our lifestyle, our eating habits. All of the things are are so unique that you can't just do a cookie cutter solution to all your clients and patients chief complaints or problems so as an example you can have 10 people come to you and they said i have chronic headaches or i have headaches that have been going on for a long time or i've been dealing with headaches whatever however they express it well you have to ask so many different questions to really figure out what is the root cause of their headaches and what is, and I'm going to talk about this more, and you have to ask a bunch of questions, which I'll talk to you about in a minute, to kind of figure out what is the best point and what is the best essential oil to use. And it could be a combination of points, but you have to be very specific in your protocol. There are there are so many times when people's like, hey, can I get a cheat sheet of oils and point combinations? And yes, while I can do that, like there are commonalities. I don't want you to do this in a cookie cutter way. I want you to be the expert. I want you to know exactly how to differentiate their specific needs based on their specific circumstances so you can have the best results for your patients and clients. So they're happy, they're having results, and they're coming back, they're referring people to you, all the things. Okay, so let's start. Basically, when I do an intake with a patient, I start from head to toe. You have to use all your senses, meaning you have to use your physical eyes, your intuitive eyes, you have to use touch via palpation. You're looking, what you're looking at is you have to use your ears. What you're looking at is things like how their what how their posture is. Are they slumped over? Are they feeling are they energetic? You know, you're gonna look at their tongue and you're gonna do a whole and we'll talk about that in a minute. Like you're gonna look at their tongue. You're listening. You're listening not only to the words they're saying, but how they're saying it, right? Are they like super anxious and speaking in a really high voice and really fast? Or are they barely saying anything? Or is their tone low? Or they seem, how, how, what is their tonality? 
So you have to use all of your senses when you're coming up with a diagnosis. And then basically, you have to ask the right questions. Those That's really important. So what I usually do, because you want to ask about all the, you have to ask all these questions to kind of put the puzzle together. So what I usually do when I do an intake is that I will, I will go through all of the systems in the body, all the organ systems, and ask some questions. And then I kind of come up with the diagnosis. And then what I usually do is I'll look at their tongue and feel their pulses. So that's the other thing with the palpation and pulses. I'll feel the pulses so that I can kind of does this all align? What I'm seeing on the tongue and feeling on the pulses, a, 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 am I on the right track? And or sometimes when I look at somebody's tongue or feel their pulse, I'll have extra questions to ask. I'll see something or I'll feel something that makes me go, huh, wh what else is there? Now, look, I've been doing pulses for 20 plus years. This is an art. This takes time. So don't be stressed out about the pulses. So we'll just, we'll just, you'll just, we'll get to that in a second. All right. So the first thing I'll say is I'll ask them about their chief complaints. So whatever they come, come in for, right? So I, I make sure I listen and I hear what they're saying. I take good notes, et cetera. And then when I'm satisfied with their, you know, that I've gotten all the information I need on their chief complaint, the reason that they're coming to see me, then I will then go through the body systems and I'll start with their temperature. So is your, do you tend to run hot? Do you run cold? Are you the first one to put on, on, uh, on a sweater? Are you the first person to take off the sweater? Do you have like what we call yin de deficiency heat? Do you have hot flashes? Do you have sweaty palms and feet? Those are some of the th questions that I'll ask. Do you sweat easy? temperature, that kind of thing. And it's more like not what the thermometer says, but how they're feeling. And then for women, I'll always ask about their menstrual cycle. And I'll get very specific and say how, you know, when did, when was the onset? Are, are your menstrual cycles regular? What does that mean? Get really specific about, are they heavy? Are they heavy for a few days? Are they, do you have clots? Like, is, what's the color of the blood? Do you have to have all that information? to start really putting the puzzle together. Then I'll ask, I'll start from that top and work my way down. So actually don't typically ask about their menses first, but I'll start from the top down. So I'll say, do you suffer from headache? And if they're like, yes, then I will say, how frequent are the headaches? Where on the head do you feel the headaches? Is it temporal? Is it on the top? Is it frontal? Is it sinus? Is it neck and shoulders? These all mean different things, right? What is the quality of the pain of your headaches? Is it throbbing? Is it is it dull ache? Is it sharp? Is it, you know, whatever the quality of the pain is, I'll ask, I'll get very specific about the pain. Again, I think I said how often, how frequent are the headaches that that you're getting? And it's, it'll be very similar if I'm talking about body pain. I'll ask where the pain is, what is the quality, because a dull ache and a sharp ache mean two different things, right? One's tends to be more chronic and one tends to be more acute. And typically if they're acute and they're sharp and they're burning or happening more just, and it's new, then it's acute and you could typically have quicker results. If it's chronic, anytime that you're thinking that something's chronic, it's going to take more time to resolve. So headaches, pain, I will ask about the heart. So do you have any chest pain? Do you have any palpitation? Do you know, do you have high blood pressure? Digestion, I will ask them many questions around digestion. Do you, do you, how is your appetite? Is it, do you have cravings? What are the cravings? Are they sweet? Are they salty? Do you have any indigestion? Do you have bloating? Do you, do you what is your, what are your bowel movements like? How regular are they? And let me tell you something that I, I can't tell you how many times women would say, I have regular bowel movements 
And I'll say, what does regular mean to you? And they'll say every other day or so. Okay, well, that's regular. You're right. But that is not healthy movement of your bowels. Okay, so this is, again, more in information that I will ask specifically about their stools. Are they dry? Are they loose? I mean, you have to get really comfortable asking these questions. Are they loose? You know, what about the color? Again, all the questions that you want to get really specific because all of these things mean different things. I will ask about their lungs and their immune system. Do they get sick easily? Do they have like hay fever allergies symptoms or seasonal allergies? Do they cough a lot? What is their coughing like? I would ask about if there's phlegm and if there's phlegm and their coughing is their color because again, those mean different things. I'll ask about their urination. How often do they urinate? Is it frequent? Is it infrequent? Is it more at night? Is it hard to urinate? Like all those questions mean so much. Let's see, what else will I ask? Those are the main questions I will ask. And then as I'm putting the pieces of the puzzle, to, oh no, one of the most important things you want to ask is there about their emotions. And typically I will say like, how do you move around the world? Do you get are, do you feel pretty even? Are you reactive? Do you get irritable easily? Are you angry easily? Do you get more depressed feelings? Like where on the spectrum are you on a daily basis? And, and this is not situational because everybody gets mad. Everybody, um, but people tend to have a common theme throughout their lives, right? Or throughout their adulthood and childhood maybe from childhood. So you kind of want to understand where they are in that spectrum on a regular basis. That gives you a lot of, a lot of information. And then I will feel their pulses. Like you, you have to understand, and we can't get into pulses because it's a lot, but we feel in Chinese medicine, we feel pulses on both wrists, on the radial side, the thumb side, just inside and you can feel the pulses and you put three fingers, one right on the wrist crease, and then you just follow each one. And then, and then you're going to feel for the, how each, each one has a different organ system related to it on, on both sides. And then you're going to feel, I tend to go deep and then you feel medium and then more surface. And you can feel where's one empty? Where's one strong? Is it wiry? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it sluggish? So you, you're going to get all this information. Okay. And then the tongue, I have them stick out their tongue. Uh, my tongue looks pretty good. It's a little dry, but you're going to look at the tongue body. Mine's maybe a little bit puffy. You're going to look at the tongue coating. Is it thick? Is it yellow? Is it white? Is it tongue coating on mostly one area of the tongue? In the back, it's the kidneys on the side, it's liver, gallbladder on the tip, it's the, it's the heart and the small intestine. Okay, so now that you've gathered all of that information, now you can start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. That's what I teach inside AccuOil Alchemy. I have an entire module dedicated to getting very specific about your intake and then how to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and really get very specific about your treatment protocol with your oils and choosing acupuncture points. Every module inside that training builds on the other. We have an entire module on, on the acupuncture points and their functions and actions. And I just recently did a live webinar to walk you through the entire system. I reveal the entire system for you. And if you're interested, get on the waiting list for our next one. I'll put the link below. And if you want to just jump in and just check it out, I'll also leave the link for the program. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you really take this into consideration and not treat every single client and patient 
the same way. You are different. You're standing out. You're not cookie cutter. If you really want to stand out in your business and be that go-to practitioner, then you really have to do things differently in your business. You don't want to be another practitioner on the block. You really want to be known for something. All right. I hope this is helpful. And if you like this, please subscribe and like, like it. And if you have any questions, just comment below and I'll be sure to respond. All right. Take care.